Greetings in the bonds of peace and welcome to Ani Ishai One. My name is Dr. Sean Lyons, a forever student of the vision and revelation of Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, who had his vision in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley proved these facts on three ecclesiastical peace missions to every religious organization and school of the highest learning around the world from 1958 to 1976. As a result of his divine vision and revelation, he transcribed Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe, which was given to every school of the highest learning and religious organization, president elect and queens and kings of the earth along with a holy name version Bible, transliterated by A.B. Trainer, an Italian Hebrew with the true and correct name and title of the father and his son. Yahweh is the name of the father. Elohim is his divine title and Yahshua the Messiah is the name of the son. Within the inscription, Dr. Henry C. Kinley revealed to the world the threefold pattern Yahweh Elohim revealed to Moses upon Mount Sinai in 1490 BBY. What I'm doing is I'm just going to focus in on the vision of our founder. I do apologize for any uh, technical difficulties. I'm just trying to focus in so that you will be able to see and understand some of the things that I'm saying to you, trying to uh, focus in a little bit. Please just bear with me. No worries. Mm -hmm. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, okay. And here's Moses, right here, on top of Mount Sinai in the year yeah. of 1490 BY. This was also revealed to John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos, right here. That Yahshua, the Messiah, was the true Eloah who Yahweh sent into the world for the remissions of sins by the operation of blood, water, and spirit. Yahshua offered one time himself through his eternal spirit to the Father to remove sin in the flesh through his death, burial, and resurrection and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Here you see his death, his burial, his resurrection here, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Here's John on the Isle of Patmos, his vision too of Elohim right here, seeing Yahshua the Messiah, the true tabernacle pattern right here. <clears throat> in AD 33 and AD 40 to this present day in the kingdom age on page 69, volume one, the comparative analyst of the apocalyptic confirmation of the creation. Dr. Kelly also revealed in the same public publication, page 129, volume one entitled, Yahweh, the all in all, that Yahweh is the substance, the limits and the bounds, the all in all and that's all. Dr. Henry C. Kinley gave rules of engagement pertaining to his vision that the manifestation will change, but the principle will remain the same. That being said, study to show thyself a workman who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And may the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, teach you all things. My aims and objectives is to help you find Yahshua, the Messiah, in your heart 
and in your mind. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20, 2 Corinthians 3, 1-6, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-5. through 5. My second aim and objective is to show you how Yahweh wrote his laws in your inward parts. Jeremiah 31, 31, and also in Hebrews the eighth chapter. My third aim is to help you to discern the sons of Elohim and the sons of the devil. First John, third chapter, first John four, one through 10. At this particular time, we're gonna have a prayer, our scripture reading, announcement, our script ascertainment and perception and direction examination, the speaker, and at the end we will have our doxology, which will be Romans 16, 25 through 27. So at this time, let us bow our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this chance and opportunity to bear witness of the truth in Yahshua Messiah's name, that Yahshua Messiah have all the glory and all the honor, and let it be known that it is Yahshua who is the Comforter and the Holy Spirit that will reveal all things to you as well as to me. My earnest prayer is that all be saved, but we know that that's not true. But those who will diligently seek Yahweh in spirit and in truth I ask that the Father bless and increase in Yahshua's name. The scripture reading will be 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Give me one moment, please. Okay. Once again, the scripture reading will be 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, read out of the Holy Name Version Bible, critically compared with ancient authorities, various manuscripts revised by the late A.B. Trainer. Dare any of you having matters against another, go to the law before the unjust and not before the sons. Do ye not know that the sons shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? how much more the things pertain to this life. If then ye have judgment of things pertaining to this life, do you set them to judge who are at least esteemed in the assembly? I speak to your saying. It is so that there is not a wise man among you. No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren, but brother, go to the law with brother, and that before the unbeliever. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to the law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren, Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven? Excuse me. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, neither idolaters, neither adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor self-abusers, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, 
shall inherit the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of Yahweh. And such were some of you, including myself. <laughs> but now ye are washed, but now ye are sanctified, but now ye are justified in the name of the Savior, Yahshua, by the spirit of our alone. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Food for the belly and the belly for food, but Yahweh shall destroy both. Now the body is not for fornication, but for Yahweh and Yahweh for the body. And Yahweh hath both raised up Yahshua and will also raise us up, excuse me, and will also raise up us by his own power. Now, know ye not that your bodies are the members of the Messiah? Shall I then take the members of the Messiah and make them members of a harlot? By no means. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For the two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto Yahweh is one spirit. Plead fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sins against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? which is in you, which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are his. Which are his. I have tried to read to you 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Hallelujah. At this particular time, um, there will be no announcements. So we will be going on to our scripture ascertainment and um, perception and description examination. Now here we see, we have in plate one, Elohim manifests himself right here. So now here, what we'll be doing is, is going to the chart. And what we'll be doing is, is going over these fundamental principles again and again, over and over. And they are for a reason. Okay. Now here, we see plate one, which is Elohim. And here, we have Elohim manifesting himself as Adam, right here, pertaining to plate one. We have all of the attributes of Yahweh Elohim manifest within his supernal nature. They are here, see? And just to show forth, we have your foundation, which is manifesting right here. We have your power, which is manifesting right here. We have your strength, which is manifesting right here. These are picking up the three at the bottom. <clears throat> this particular arm, you have your love. Here, you have your justice. The chest cavity represents beauty. Here represents your intelligence. On this side of his hair represents knowledge, and at the top, what represents wisdom. Then that is picking up all nine of the divine major attributes according to the supernal nature or the body of Yahweh Elohim. 
Here, we have our theosophy, which is plate two, which is manifesting the kingdom, just as plate one. Here, we have our theosophy manifesting right here. And on the vision being revealed, it is revealing the nine attributes manifesting spirit law within all physical creation to show forth how all nine divine major attributes manifested themselves within the days of creation to bring forth the whole entire creation as we know it to be. Here we have plate number three, which is showing the divine tabernacle pattern. This pattern is a result of a divine vision that was given to Moses atop Mount Sinai in the year of 1490 BBY. So therefore, every Yahweh Elohim given pattern or every vision and revelation must have this Yahweh Elohim given pattern. So here, we will go to the chart being revealed. And everything that you see here within the darkness or the blackness of this particular chart is showing forth the court roundabout or principles of the outer court. And this chart or this vision is in Adam form. So here, as you see south, you see east, you see north. And then we have right up here that is set because we understand that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So set would be the principle of the fourth principle on the altar of sin sacrifice as west. So this is one point of blood. Red here, second point of blood, red here, third point of blood, red here north, the fourth point of blood. So also in this tabernacle pattern, we must pick up principles of water, which is the brazen labor. So here you observe this here is manifesting the labor or the cup. See, showing forth how all the sacrifices are washed before they are placed, see, on the altar to be consumed. So this here is your labor. We also have principles of the holy anointing oil so that the high priest may be able to officiate from one compartment to another. This being the court roundabout and him having the holy anointing oil poured upon his head, which allows the, the high priest to officiate from the court roundabout to the holy place. So here on this particular chart, it is showing forth how we have this particular acts manifesting the principles of the holy anointing oil. Right here on the chart, it is showing forth how this particular ax had cut away this particular tree from away from the lion's head, removing all carnality and physical things pertaining to things within this court roundabout. And by him cutting this away is allowing the man's heart and his mind to go up unto the holy place and the most holy place and to officiate and to commune with the father. So going through the veil, we understand that Yahshua is the door. And this is why we have Yahshua here as the roaring lion of the tribe of Judah. And this is the door and the only way up to where you can go into the holy place. Now the holy place is manifesting the blue portion of this particular chart. Because once again, this chart is in Adam form. Okay, so now, Yahshua being the door, we have officiated into the holy place. So therefore, this particular part or section of the chart must reveal principles that are revealed in the holy place. So here, we observe the seven branch lampstand. We also have the table of shoe bread and the altar of sin sacrifice manifesting here within the holy place. When we come here, we understand that we have plate one, okay, or plate number six manifesting together, okay? Because we have Yahweh Elohim manifesting as plate one and the first day of creation, which is plate six manifesting simultaneously. And also to show you how we have the first river, 
When Yahweh Elohim has set the man within the garden that had four heads, this is the first dispensation as well. The first dispensation is the Adamic dispensation, and we have all of them lined up within the man Elohim, manifesting its principle right here. So therefore, we understand that Elohim is the one who has lit up the world throughout the ages and dispensations. Yahweh Elohim is the king of kings. Can you still hear me? Okay, just wanted to make sure. So therefore, Yahweh Elohim has lit up all seven ages and dispensations. Yahweh Elohim is the light of the world. We have to understand that we cannot separate the unity of the spirit. So we have Yahweh Elohim Yahshua here. We have Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua here manifesting as play 40. So therefore, this being the principles of the menorah that has led up all the ages and dispensation from the beginning, we come here to Yahshua, the high priest of high priests, as we understand this to be as plate 40 on our 40 plate chart. When Yahshua Messiah was up here and walked through the Palestinian and Judean hills, he used terminologies and said things that I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the light. See? So this is showing forth that without controversy, Yahweh Elohim had manifested himself in the flesh, seen the bandage, and received up into glory. And he is the bread of life, which is picking up the principles of the table of shoe bread. Here, we understand as well that Yahshua is the intercessor between man and the Father, or man and God, as we understand within the scriptures. And we understand that God is another manifestation, which we understand to be the word, our son, our Elohim. So, Yahshua is the intercessor, showing forth the intercession or the sweet-smelling Savior, see, between the Father and the most holy place, see, and it being a sweet-smelling Savior from the stench of what was being burned in the court round about pertaining to the sacrifices. Going through the veil, we have the Ark of the Covenant, which is a three-piece configurated piece of furniture, which has two archangels, a mercy seat, see? And then within that mercy seat, we understand that it has a compartment which is containing the Ten Commandment Law, the manna, and also Aaron's rod that budded. So therefore, when we look at this, we come to the chart that's being revealed we must see principles that are pertaining to the most holy place. So here, as I showed you before, when, when I was illustrating how Yahweh Elohim manifested himself as the first Adam that was manifesting principles of the manure is now manifesting one of the angels on the Ark of the Covenant. So here you see Yahweh Elohim are the man standing here. And if you look here, here is one of the wings that is on his back. And it is touching the wing, see, that is touching Yahshua, the high priest, is touching his back, bearing witness one to another of each other that is manifesting within the cloud upon the mercy seat. Here. This is manifesting, this particular square that is revealing the new earth is manifesting the mercy seat and the most holy place. Because as I said, the vision is in Adam form. This being the negative electrical charge of the particular chart as the electron here in, and this being the outer court or the court roundabout. And then here, once we get into the holy place, this is manifesting the positive electrical charge as the proton. This is the pro, this is the time, and this blue portion is manifesting the holy place or the proton. And then here, this particular box here is manifesting the neutron, which does not have an electrical charge, but receives its charge from the two hours. Okay? So that being said, those are principles that we have. See that this- is breaking up just a little bit. It's breaking up a little bit. Okay, this is just to show you how the chart is in Adam R 
the chart is going according to the tabernacle in Adam form. Now, here we go right here to plate number four. And plate number four is showing forth your cosmogony, okay? Showing forth the beginning. Now here on the chart being revealed, it's showing forth how you have two archangels. I showed you that manifesting within the most holy place. And then you have a heart within a heart within the heart, within the heart, manifesting right here, within the most holy place, manifesting eternity. Here is your eternity. This is a heart manifesting within this heart, manifesting within this heart, okay? Then we understand, as I said, that the vision being in atom form and coming all the way down, we see how we have your ions, your addons, your electron, your proton, and your neutron. We just went over those principles that are manifesting right here. Then we understand that right here, it is showing for the integral added earth or altar, see? And then it's representing the first heaven. So you come all the way down here and then you can see that manifesting right here. And we use that as example in plate number six which is the first day of creation because everything that's within the court roundabout, it does not really change. It's just a manifestation at a particular time going according to the days of creation, okay? So therefore, we must see how all these things must be applied to not only the vision, but as well as the vision that was given to Moses atop of Mount Sinai. So here we can also see how that we have 70% water, Okay, and then we have 25% of earth or matter. Okay, showing forth a whole 100%. This is basically pretty much how you are made. 75% water, 25% mass. Okay, so this is the integral ionic part. Here we have steam and everything that are coming up to show you the things that are manifesting within this because here we have water and fire at this particular time manifesting on a conglomerated mass of earth. Now, when we go right here to our chaosis plate, see, this is this chaosis or this darkness manifesting all the way around this particular chart. And as you see right here, the darkness is only on the outside of the veils. That's why it's on the outside of this particular chart. You see right here within Manifesting within the carbon space of the deep, it says the most holy place and everything being in blue. And then we have the heart manifesting right here, showing forth that within here is no contamination. Contamination or the carbon space of the deep is manifesting on the outside of this particular chart. When we get here to the first day of creation, our plate six, we see, as I told you earlier, that this is manifesting within Elohim manifesting himself as the first man, Adam. And we will later on get into this to show you how that this, see, is to show you how everything manifests simultaneously, precept upon precept, precept upon precept. See, it all must line up like that. Here a little, there a little, but it has to manifest according to the scriptures, as I told you. Sometimes we must have to look for a synonym and a picture, okay? So that we can be able to understand that it's all going back into the reality. And the reality is the original archetype pattern of the universe, which is no more than Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua. Moving right along. So now we see the first day of creation manifesting right here. The second day of creation and the second dispensation is manifesting right up here. And on this particular chart, it is manifesting principles as the watchers above, right here, and this land on its side. 
revealing to you the open window and showing you how the waters were, were divided between the waters beneath. These are the upper waters. These are the waters beneath, okay? But it's laying on this side. And what we have done is that we use the third day of creation to represent the waters below because we understand that right here is showing forth how the waters are being rolled away. See, the vegetation appearing, but we see how this spirit or the dove is manifesting the seed of vegetation and penetrating the earth and coming up and allow the vegetation to grow. And this is manifesting itself as a tree, which is a tree of life. See, and to show you forth how everything had went into blossom and to fruition on the third day of creation. But as well, we're on the second day. So this is why we have it manifesting itself up top. And so here we have the waters above, the division between the waters above those beneath and then the waters beneath. Here, as I said, we have the third day of creation. The third day of creation is manifesting here. And as well, it is manifesting, like I said, the waters below. And I have given you the illustration from here. See, and this being the second age, I mean, no, the second dispensation and the second day. And here we come down to the third, the third day and the third dispensation, okay? Manifesting itself right here, all right? along with the third day. Now, when we get to the fourth day of creation, okay? It is manifesting right here within the plate 40 or manifesting itself right within Yahshua. Why is that? Because in class, what we do is we say that the S-O-N and the S-U-N are one and the same. And we understand that when we go back and we look at the days of creation, when we see in this first man, Adam, being formed from the dust of the ground, okay? See, and we see how that we have the sun manifesting in the sky or the woman being clothed in the sun and then we have a tree manifesting right there. And I believe that's plate 11, see? So this is to show forth how that the S-U-N and the S-O-N is lined up one and this is pick, picking up plate 40 and plate four, okay? Manifesting itself right here. So this is why this is manifesting within the body of the second Adam, which is no more than Yahshua. Now here we have plate number 10 in the fifth day of creation, and we have the eagle manifesting right here. We have the eagle manifesting right here as the fifth day of creation, and also manifesting one of the enzymes or banners, see, that was set see around the children of Israel. So here that you see in this eagle manifest, it is manifesting the king of the ontological, the ontological and biological kings. So he is manifesting right here in this particular star that comes out of the chest cavity, see, of Yahshua, see? And the reason being is, is to show forth that the eagles are a reflect of the stars in heaven because the stars in heaven is a reflect of the angels. See, that was created within the realm of eternity that is placed on the second veil. See? So this is why we have this. And this is what related to. And as well, this star and these stars that's represented in the chest cavity of Yahshua Messiah is also manifesting the Lamb's Book of Life. And so this is one of the stars, see, of out of his book. Moving right along. So now we get to the sixth day of creation. And like I said, here we are at plate number 11. See? Camera switched over. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, I don't know why it keeps doing that. <clears throat> Must be a timer. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be one. I don't. And I see something um, flashing right here, but it shouldn't be no timer. And you're right, it is a timer, but it shouldn't, shouldn't be no timer that's on. Okay. Yeah, it keeps saying, it said stopped automatically. 
mm -hmm. on my screen. And I don't know why it shouldn't be stopping. But nevertheless, we will okay. we will move on. Okay. Okay. So here, plate number eleven is manifesting right here. Plate number eleven, we see how the man was being created from the dust of the ground, which is manifesting itself right here. Here we have the pure spirit of Yahweh manifesting itself as eternity. See, it's manifesting the dust of the ground. See, which the man was formed from. Here you see the white portion of this particular chart, which is showing forth as a principle of the moon and manifesting the creation being finished. It's showing forth how you have that cloud above the man. And then we have the dove entering into him, manifesting the breath of life. So therefore it's showing forth how you see this white all around this particular man is representation of the cloud and the man breathing in the breath of life. Here it is showing forth how these nine major attributes, which is manifesting within the dove, see, which is allowing him to have his being right within himself and showing forth by the power of the nine major attributes, which is giving life unto the man. Now, I wanted to say too, that this line that you see that's going right across right here, that the man that was created from the dust of the ground right here, this is showing forth how Yahweh had took the man from outside of the garden and then took him and placed him into the garden. So this is why you see him here. And now you see the man manifest himself here, okay? Because this is where he was created and this is where he was placed when Yahweh Elohim had took the woman out of the man. Now here we are on plate number 12. Here we have Yahweh Elohim taking the man and putting them him in a deep like sleep. This is why when you're looking at the veils that are manifesting right here, see, it is showing forth the operation. And this is why we have right here spiritual immersion, because this is showing you the operation of Elohim, which is manifesting within the man before he took out the rib and these carnal ordinances that are manifesting in the chest cavity of the man is manifesting the rib that he used to create the woman. Now here, right here, when you see this, the um, Ark of the Covenant with this face manifesting in it, this is manifesting the woman. The South is manifesting her chest cavity just like the man showing four power cosmic light and the spirit of Elohim is manifesting within her chest cavity as well. Now, when you're looking at this round circle right here and you're seeing how you have the man that was created from the dust of the ground, see our virgin mother earth, which was, which is symbol, symbolic into the pure spirit state of Yahweh. And then you see this chaotic creature manifesting right here. This is manifesting her belly or her stomach, okay? The two twin towers is manifesting her legs. It's like how you see the man's legs. And then right here, as you see where she's standing, it's standing it says that she is standing on a satanic foundation. And the reason being because we know how the story goes, because the woman was the one who partook, see, of the tree and then gave to her husband and he did eat. So this is the reason why that her foundation was established. See, it wasn't before, but she took upon herself for her foundation to become satanic once she hearkened unto this. Now, the reason being that he is here and she is here because this is showing forth the enmity that Yahweh said that he would put between the woman and the serpent, okay? Moving right along. Oh, so now what I wanted to say here while we got the man being open, when Yahweh is doing his surgery on the man, okay? This is the first operation of man. This is showing forth that when Yahweh Elohim had opened up the man to show forth what was manifesting in him, how the man had the spirit of Elohim manifesting in him and there was no darkness in the man. See, and then when you're looking at this part of the man, it is showing forth how the man's seed is manifesting the same thing that's within the man's heart. You see the Holy Spirit here and the Holy Spirit here, but this is just the spirit of Elohim at this particular time. It has not become the Holy Spirit until after the death, the burial, 
the resurrection, ascension, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. See, and this is when Yahshua becomes the Holy Spirit to manifest within your heart and within your mind. Okay? Now, when you're looking at the waters above, when you're looking at this heart, okay, we understand that within the head cavity, on our physiology chart, we understand that the brain or the head cavity has amniotic fluids, see, up here, okay, that submerges the brain. So, therefore, this right here is showing forth that when you're looking at this particular chart, it's showing forth how the law or the spirit of Yahweh is manifesting within his, his mind, and this is him in his heart right here. This is showing forth his seed, okay? And this is also revealing the book of Elohim to Moses upon Mount Sinai. So if you look right here, this is manifesting the moon, which is this half right here. This is manifesting Mount Sinai because you have Moses right here looking at Elohim, see? And then you have the meeting tip, okay? With Moses, Yahshua, and Aaron. And I will explain to you the reason why that I said that this physical or chaotic creature is Aaron because it's just manifesting a principle of disobedience at this particular time. The reason being said that, that if you know the prophecy, that right after that Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, see, and 70 of the elders that resided at the lower plateau of this particular mountain, see, they left after Moses stayed up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The reason why we're using Aaron as a negative principle because he was the one who built the golden calf, okay, pertaining to the principles of the three that are within the meeting tent if you know the prophecy. So now we see here in getting back to this particular part being the loins of the man and this being the book of Elohim revealing it to Moses, see, upon Mount Sinai. Now this dove is representing everybody who is holy within that book, including Moses, all the way down from Adam to Noah to Noah, to Abraham, to Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then the whole entire 12 tribes of the children of Israel, see, and it show forth how we had the eagle that was pertaining to Asher, we had the oxen pertaining to Manasseh, we had the man pertaining to Simon, we had the lion pertaining to Judah picking up the 12 tribes of the children of Israel with their enzymes, see, and the other tribes within the tribes, and then this being the enzyme of each tribes of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So therefore, you can see how that when Yahweh opened up the man and took out this carnal ordinance, which manifested as a rib and a womb, okay? That's why we have carnal here and ordinance here, rib, Womb created the woman, and here she is taken up out of the man. Okay, so now this is why when you see the man waking up here, and see this lightning bolt is representation of the spiritual immersion showing forth how that spirit is entering into the man. Okay, so that's why you see that lightning bolt and the dove coming down and it being a spiritual immersion. So now we see what is in the man. This is the man lying down and standing up simultaneously. This is the mound of dirt that you see right here above the man to show for what the man was created out of. This is why he says, uh, ashes to ashes, dirt to dirt, dirt you was taken, dirt you shall return, okay? Which is substance that come from virgin mother earth, which we understand that Yahweh Elohim, see, from this state of existence, transmuted himself into matter. And matter is no more than spirit materialized. So now we move right along to the migratory, uh, the history of the pattern to Canaan's land, which is plate number 13, okay? So we're here in the most holy place. You see here on Mount Zion, the tabernacle. So here at Mount Zion, we have that place, okay, in a square-like form to show you that this is the particular tabernacle that was manifesting itself here on Mount Zion. Then we have the temple that is manifesting itself right here on Mount Moriah, which we understand to be King Solomon's temple. Now here we have the 
the uh, Ark of the Covenant and the children of Israel going to and through the divided waters of the River Jordan, going into the most holy place. That will be manifesting itself right here. Here you see this perforated line right here showing forth how you have the waters above and those beneath, okay, before they were divided on the second day of creation, okay? So now this is manifesting how the River Jordan overflowed its banks. So here we have the children of Israel as the sons of Elohim going to and through the divided waters of the River Jordan manifesting himself right here, getting ready to go into the most holy place at this particular time, which we understand to manifest as right up here with Mount Moriah picking up the principle of King Solomon's temple, and Mount Zion picking up the principles of the tabernacle pattern. I already shared with you how that we have Judah, we have Simon, no, I'm sorry, yeah, we have, we have Simon, Manasseh, and we have Asher picking up the banners, okay? Simon, we have one, two, three, picking up the other tribes of the children of Israel. Here we have Manasseh picking up one, two, three, those tribes. We have Asher, one, two, three. We have Judah, one, two, three. Here we have the tabernacle pattern manifesting in the wilderness. That's manifesting right here, the most holy place, the holy place. This is manifesting the outer court, which we see right here, to show you how we have the 12 tribes of the children of Israel manifesting within the holy place or the wilderness of Sinai after coming up out of the devastation of Egypt. Here we see the children of Israel down here on Egypt putting the blood on the door, different from the basin, okay? So here we have, we come back here to this labor, this cup or this basin, okay? We have a point of blood here. We have a point of blood here. We have a point of blood here, okay? You can also use, see, this part of the sun and this principle of east as a basin that you are dipping into to manifest the four points of blood, but just to show you that it is down here in this particular area to pick up the principle, okay? And it is tension night, just like how it was down here in the land of Egypt, see? And so this here, when you are looking at the rod, that is dividing the light from the darkness, see? And then you see that man Moses standing right here. That's like unto this Holy Spirit manifesting itself right here. Now, the eye in ascension right here is manifesting the rod, and this is the rod manifesting itself as well, which is the trunk of the tree that is manifesting the tree of life. So therefore, if you can see how this manifesting itself as the rod, because this is a manifestation of Aaron's rod that had budded, that is manifesting within the mercy seat. See, right in between the two angels are the cherubims manifesting within, see, the Ark of the Covenant. And you can see how this particular rod is manifesting. This part is the darkness, and this is part of the light, dividing the light from the darkness that is manifesting itself right here. So all we're doing basically is just picking up principles. I don't know why it keeps doing that. And I have a flashing light and I apologize. I don't know why it is doing that. But nevertheless, I'm gonna keep on going. I hope that it stops. I don't know what will make it stop. And I'll look into that later, but let's move along. We ain't gonna allow um, insufficiencies to stop the show because that's just something, a tool that Satan would like, you know what I mean, to manifest itself for us to kind of like stop what we're doing, okay? So now, okay. when we get here, we are manifesting um, plate 14, okay? This is the transgression plate, okay? So now, plate 14 will be manifesting itself right here. This will be manifesting plate 14, okay? Here we have the devil, the dragon, the serpent, See, here are four heads, which is manifesting Babylon, Media, Persia, and Greece. And here's this tail that is manifesting the serpent right here. See, and these are the stars, are the one third host that was kicked out of heaven. See, manifesting right here. And they are in darkness. 
okay, and then manifesting themselves in the earth plane, which we will later get into as we move along down the charts, okay, and showing forth how Michael had removed them, see, from heaven. Here we have a symbol of Yasu Messiah with his sword, flaming sword, removing them, see, out of the kingdom, never to return in the blue portion of this vision again. This is why they are on the outer court or manifesting in outer darkness. And this is what we are seeing right here. They are being shown forth the angelic creation. This is being the most holy place. And we have Michael there showing them and putting them into everlasting darkness, which is chaosis manifesting as the darkness all the way around this particular chart, chaosis. So now, here we have the academic transgression manifesting right here is plate 15, see? And then we see how the woman is giving the man the fruit, see? And then we have Satan right here that's over the woman and he has his little hands manifesting as a puppeteer. Here's the beast. Here's his hands manifesting as a puppeteer. Here's a woman on the other side. Now at this particular time, this is kind of like after the transgression and how they had came out of the garden. Here you see how Adam has fig leaves around his loins at this particular time because he is hiding himself from the voice of Elohim, see, amongst the trees of the garden. Now if this is a tree, this is a tree of knowledge of good and of evil and before it was cut down, it was resurrected here. You have these trees. You have these trees that are manifesting right here and these trees that are manifesting here within the fourth day as well as these trees to give you a principle of trees and that this garden is in fruition at this particular time. Okay, and showing forth how you have fruit on these trees that the man can eat. So by the man having these fig leaves upon his loins is showing forth how he is hiding himself from the voice of Elohim walking in the garden. And then how you see the sun manifesting by the light behind, see, this particular tree of life, see? It's showing forth how you see the root of Yahshua Messiah, it is rising. And this is manifesting the cherubim, which stopped the man from partaking of the tree of life after he had partook of this, so that he may live forever, see? And this is manifesting, this light is manifesting as a cherubim, see? With the flaming sword that turned every which way that prevented the man from touching the tree. Now, right here we have a uh, the antediluvian age, the beginning of it. And here we have uh, Cain sitting as the apostasy, which we have manifested right here, as well as manifesting simultaneously, plate 37, okay? So here's Cain sitting right here on his throne. Shows forth right here how Cain has slew his brother. This is Cain, this is Abel, showing forth the two brothers right here, showing forth the physical creature. See, as Cain, the angelic creature is Abel at this particular time. So this is Cain and Abel. And then this is showing forth when you see how this dove, which is manifesting as Abel, showing forth how he's being slain right here. Here's his blood dripping into the ground. He is being slain by his brother. See, showing forth we got an angelic and physical, and how the physical always persecutes the angelic. This dove coming down, an explosion is showing forth his death. Here's his heart, here's the blood, and it is dripping down into the satanic foundation, which we talked about being where the woman was standing. So here's Elohim, see? And we understand how it says in the scriptures, how Elohim had told uh, Cain, he says, why is it that I hear it, your brother's blood crying to me from the ground? So here's Elohim saying this to Cain, and he hearing by the drop that is coming from his heart, the blood crying to Elohim from the ground. And that's why you have this teardrop manifesting, leaking from the heart. And, so, and that interpretation that Elohim said he heard the blood crying from the ground of that satanic foundation 
that the woman had partaken of when she partook of the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. Now this is showing you how this particular chart is multi principle okay? So therefore, the reason why I'm saying these things that you have to know and understand the scriptures to be able to see a lot of these things unfold. So moving right along. So now when we get to plate 17, we have Enoch, okay, the seventh from Adam. And here we have him being taken at his 360th year being on the earth plane. And he was not because he had never seen death. So here, right here, see, we have the two witnesses or the two angels. And what they're doing is they came for him and they're taking him to the kingdom. So this is when we have this ascension and this is the same ascension as we use death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah. Because Yahshua Messiah did nothing more but fulfill the things that has happened within the law and the prophets throughout the prophecy. So if it was somebody that had went through a resurrection See, that was uh, in the uh, beginning of time. You're going to see somebody go through a resurrection at the ending of time. Okay? So now moving right along, I think we are on plate 18. All right? Now here, looking at the same tree, if you look at how this structure goes right here and then going right here with this middle window, of the second day of creation and we're looking at the middle plate and then you see the dove then you see the leaf okay this is manifesting the window of heaven this is coming down right here because this is showing you how this is the ark manifesting itself see upon the waters this is the door you see that Yahshua had closed the door to the ark and the animals came in two by two okay into the ark so this is just being principles, just show forth how we understand that Yahshua is the door, okay, and the animals coming in by this way, by the truth, the way, and the light, and this is manifesting the door. These are manifesting the eight soul that was upon the ark and all the animals that had manifested within. The white that you see written on the chart is manifesting the rain, how it rained 40 days and 40 nights. This is the window of heaven to where they let the dove out. The first time it left the ark, it flew, it came back because it was nowhere to rest its feet. The second time it let the dove out of the ark, it flew, came back, picked off an olive leaf. So that was letting Noah knew that the waters was a bite, a bite or going down. And then the third time they let the dove out, it never returned because it had somewhere to rest his feet. It's showing you picking up on the third day of creation how everything is dry and that there's land. I'm sorry that it's so far away that you may not can be able to see, but I will focus in a little bit more so that you will be able to see a little bit more better. But this is just to show you how that we have to um, get, like I said, the synonym and be able to apply it to the scriptures and what you are looking at so that you will know that Everything is compatible with the scriptures, okay? And that's one thing that I said to you that's very important because the scriptures must validate what you are seeing so that you can be able to understand something spiritual and psychological, okay? Synonyms are important to be able to understand the reality. So here we are. We picked up the principles of the art, the door, and then we go to plate 19. I showed you how to what the rain represent over there on the chart. So now they are outside of the ark, and this is plate 20, and then you have the rainbow manifesting in the sky, which is the Noetic covenant, okay? Which we have manifesting right here within that window, okay? And above the dove, all right? And if you okay. understand, it is principle on the second dispensation, okay? And the second day of creation, because we know uh, on the second day of creation, the second dispensation, we know that that had ended with the flood pertaining to Noah. The second day is pertaining to when he divided the waters above from those beneath. So these are water principles. These are synony synonyms that are harmoniously together that are picking up a principle of water, 
Okay, so that's why it is significant for us to be able to understand that. And then for the principles to be upon principle to be upon principles, just like how it says over there, line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept. It has to be like that. So these are precepts upon precepts that you must understand with the lines upon lines, okay? And the line is water. So that is the precept or the synonym that one must follow to be able to see the scriptures unfold, to show forth the spirituality of what we call and understand what is a vision and the interpretation of what we're looking at by a vision and its principles. Okay, so this, when I was talking about the rainbow, we have the rainbow that is manifesting within the uh, second day of creation. The reason being, okay, is because this is the origin of the spears, okay? It's the origin of the spears. So by it being the origin of the spears, you can understand why we have the rainbow manifesting right there because that is its origin of it. Sorry if these plates are not in order, but we will make do what we have and keep moving right along. So now okay. we have, we have uh, the um, we have Noah in his vineyard, okay, and this is plate twenty one. All right, so now that would take the man being back within the garden, okay. See, the man and his wife being back in the garden because he has his vineyard right here in the most holy place. Now, in the holy place, it's showing forth how the other two sons of Noah, which is uh, Shem and Yafat, is going in backwards and they're covering up the nakedness of their father while you see Ham standing there looking at his father's nakedness. That would be likened unto um, Moses and Yahshua, the high priest of high priests, manifesting Shem and Yafat. Okay, Moses being the older and Yahshua the son of Nun being a fat, Moses manifested himself as Shem. You understand what I'm saying? Walking in backwards, covering up their father's nakedness. Now here it appears to be like Moses is taking this plate and removing it from his chest cavity and throwing it down, which really he is. Because we understand that him removing this, you understand what I'm saying? And removing this from his book from the chest cavity of the father is going back to show forth how that he is covering. So here is the removal. Here is the covering. See, right here. And showing forth the principle of the two going into the tent and two right here. Now, I wanna go back to this because how it looks like when it says that they're covering up their, the father's nakedness, in reality, it's bringing this down to earth, okay? So when you see the principles of the division between light and darkness, it is showing you that this is light and this is darkness, okay? And this is the nakedness of the father manifesting itself on the earth plane, and this is the reason why he is throwing it down because this is the reality of the whole world's fate to show forth how the creation was subjected to vanity unwillingly. And this is to show forth this, and this is the Father's neck and this manifesting within the earth plane. And that's what's picking that up, another synonym, see? Or a precept. So here is manifesting the death of Noah. And he prophesied. Now, if you look at the way that Noah is laying, here's his head, there's his feet, and he's laying right here, and it's showing for why he lived 950 years after the flood, okay? Here, if you look at this tree of knowledge of good and evil, in the scriptures over there in Mark 8 and, 20, 8 and 22, when Yahshua had healed the blind man, he said that I see men walking as trees. So this particular tree is showing forth or manifesting how Noah is laying and he is dead. Here's the head 
top part of the tree manifests the head, the trunk manifests in his body. Where the trunk was cut off is manifesting his feet. So this whole entire tree is manifesting a principle of a man as well as a tree. As I told you, the vision is multi-principle. As we go down, this tree will also make a manifestation of, of King Nebuchadnezzar in the night looking up at the great statue, see, which manifested as Babylon, Media, Persia, and Greece, and these are those. And then you have Pagan and Papal Rome that's picking up the iron and clay legs, you see what I'm saying, of the great image that he had a dream within the night, see, which we are coming up on now. So this right here, this tree is manifesting the man looking up, see, at that great image, and Daniel was the only one to be able to interpret the dream at this particular time. And we almost there, see? Okay, so that ends plate 21. Now plate 22 right here, which is the Tower of Babel, it's pretty much kind of like self-illustrated to where we see the satanic foundation. The World Trade Center is manifesting the Tower of Babel. Here's the voice of Yahweh speaking from the top of that, but yet and still right here, it's the spoken word of Elohim when he spoke down and confounded the language. Here we see how we have him speaking, but it's taking place within the explosion based upon the Twin Towers, see, that is manifesting over there in New York. Now, do you understand the principle of the World Trade Center? The World Trade Center was a place to where they had every individual from all around the world conglomerated, conglomerated together in this one, in these two buildings. And these two buildings, what they did was they traded commodities all around the world, but they had a representative from all over the world to manifest within this building to be able to do these particular trades. And they call it the World Trade Center because this kind of like done all the trades for all nations all over the world, okay? And then it was established um, on the United States and this is why we have it um, red, white, and blue, okay? We also yeah. gave a tribute to the individuals who had lost their lives in the World Trade Center because that was a very sad uh, day and situation for the New Yorkers. You know, and my heart kind of like goes out to him because that was, uh, when you've seen that, you know, never seen nothing like that in history. But at the same time, we had the airplanes that was in form of a dove that was hitting these particular buildings and then they were exploding. You understand what I'm saying? And then the fire, you know what I'm saying? That Yahweh Elohim is a consuming fire and this was his voice that was speaking out at this particular time. So therefore we understand that the, uh, the tower of Babel had all where the language were confounded. Okay, now if you understand the principles of the World Trade Center, like I said, you had representatives from all over the world that spoke all different type of languages. This is a representation of the same thing as the Tower of Babel. You understand what I'm saying? Here, this is when Yahweh had separated the tongues in here, and then they, they were all together right here when he separated the tongues, and then you have all the tongues right here that are gathered together again, you understand what I'm saying, in a tower or a building. You understand what I'm saying? And Yahweh has split the languages here, just like how he has split the languages here. This is sorry to say, but it's just facts. Here's the foundation, and this is showing forth how we have play um, number um, 22. Here, when we come to uh, plate number 23, okay, we have Abraham um, seeing Melchizedek inside of the temple. This temple that was manifesting where, where the king of Salem was up here in Mount Moriah are in Jerusalem, are the place of peace. This is what this was, okay? It was called Salem, okay? And Mount Moriah was where the temple was, where Melchizedek was before, see, um, this temple of King Solomon was built. It was up here in the Palestinian Judean hills, okay? At the time of Abraham, all right? The temple might not have been as beautiful and elegant as uh, King Solomon that was up here, but it is as the same proximity and place where Abraham received the blessing. Now, as we go down, we see the birth of Isaac, okay? Now, he received the blessing before Isaac was even born. And then after Isaac was born, we see that he is right here upon Mount Zion, Mount Moriah, getting ready to sacrifice the child, okay? Until he found a ram caught in the thickets. And this is why we have Yahshua right up here, see, upon Galgotha, upon the hill, see, that's on the outskirts of Mount Moriah, see? And he has um, a crown of thorns upon his head because he was the ram or the lamb or the sacrifice. You understand what I'm saying? Instead of Isaac, but yet and still pick it up the same principle. So this is why we have Mount Moriah here. See, because this was the place that the temple 
was built because of the promise and show forth how Abraham was afraid of Yahweh and it was accounted unto him unrighteousness. That was the location. So this is the reason why the death temple that we see right here on play 24 was built and established. Now we went over the migratory pattern. We went over the tabernacle pattern. Here, right here in play 26, we just went over that because here's a man sleep again as King Nebuchadnezzar. I shared that, that this tree is representing that man. Okay, sleep because of the darkness. It also representation of a man that is dead. See why? Because it has been cut away from his roots. You understand what I'm saying? And the blackness is the night. All right. Here is the image, the great image that Nebuchadnezzar had seen. And I gave you the illustration by the four heads of the dragon representing the four kingdoms. See, down here when you're picking up the papal, picking the papal, picking up the, the uh, clay and iron legs, okay, of this particular image, that being the head. Now, getting right here to the conception, which is plate 27. Right here. And then we have the birth of Yahshua and the flight up out of Egypt. Here is Egypt. The pyramid just being the principle of Egypt. Okay. Then we see right here how that the three wise men have followed the star. If you look at this plate, you will see a star right here within the window. That's why we pick up this principle of this star. Okay. Because this is one of the stars. See, or this was the enzyme over the, the 12 tribes, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. But as I said, this is the star. See, because Yahweh created the sun, moon, and stars on the fourth day of creation that was picking up the four banners. So this is the representative of the star that was in the sky where the three wise men knew how to spot out Yahshua. And then if you follow right over here to where you see the new earth, this particular wing, you understand what I'm saying, which is over the new earth, which is a representation of virgin mother earth or the woman, you see what I'm saying, is over here. And then you see how it represented the kingdom to show forth how that child was being born, which was Yahshua, manifesting himself right here without. Now, when you come here, when you see Yahshua in the temple, see on plate 28, they're leaving Egypt, principle of Egypt, as I said. Now here it shows them being in the temple. This is the outside of the temple. And this is showing them on the inside, okay? Here's the temple. Then it said that Yahshua was uh, speaking with the Pharisees and the scribes, okay? So therefore, we have Yahshua. We have a principle. You understand what I'm saying? Of other individuals that can be the Pharisees and the scribes. Yahshua was talking to him as he was a young man as he came up out of Egypt before the Passover. That can pick up those principles. So now, here we are on... Plate 29, the baptism and ministry of Yahshua the Messiah. So, with the ministry of Yahshua the Messiah, we have right here, baptism and ministry. We come down here. Here, we have John the Baptist. Here, is the roaring line of the tribe of Judah, which is likened unto Yahshua, being underwater. Here's the water. Now here you have him coming up from the water. It says that the sky is opening up. Yahweh from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Just like how you see the cloud over Yahshua, the son of none, you see a dove up in the heavens and you see the dove over him. You see the dove in the heavens, you see the dove over him. Here he is coming straight way up out of the water, and there's John the Baptist baptizing him. Okay? The principle of the two, him coming up struck way up out of the water. Now here after that, you have the temptation, okay, of Yahshua in the wilderness with, or in the holy place, with the satanic spirit. As I said before, that this is manifesting the holy place right here, okay? By this being the holy place, you have Yahshua manifest himself in the holy place. And then you have the satanic spirit manifest himself right here, tempting Yahshua. Says he took him up to the temple. Here's the temple. Here's the satanic spirit. Here's Yahshua in the holy place. And then he is tempting Yahshua. See, took him up to the temple. 
and all the things, you know what I'm saying, within that. Just showing you principles, okay? So then we have Yahshua sitting right here, and he's on the mount. This is representation of, right here says, spiritual mount. There's Yahshua, and he's preaching unto the masses, okay? Now we have on plate 30, we have the transfiguration and it says that Yahshua's face shone like the sun. And it says appeared Moses on one side and Elias on the other. We know that John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. So here is the transfiguration and Yahshua's face shining like the sun and manifesting himself as the true roaring lion of the tribe of Judah. And this is your transfiguration as well as your ascension play manifesting simultaneously. See, and that is plate 31. I had already went over the principles in plate 31 to show you how here is a step that happened in Jerusalem. See, within the darkness, all the way around, just like the darkness that's on the bottom part of the chart, um, the migration chart that we see here. Now we see how we have darkness that is manifesting this down here. Now on the chart right there, we have the darkness manifesting all the way around because see this event that happened with Yahshua Messiah being on the cross right down here within the court roundabout of the vision of the father. See, this had happened up here in Canaan's land or up here in Jerusalem above. So all we did on the chart that's being revealed, all we did was just put Yahshua in the right place and put the darkness see all around the edges, all around this chart to show you how that the creation was subjected to vanity unwillingly, just like how we were. See, that's over there in um, uh, the book of uh, uh, Romans. See, how the creation was subjected unwillingly unto this. So this is the reason why you have the darkness all the way around, opposed to just being within the court roundabout, as you see here. Now, the ascension, we have the two right there. We have the two right here. Here we have ascension because we're showing forth after his death, it's buried right here in Joseph's new tomb. This pyramid is picking up when Joseph had his ring down here in Egypt. And these are the scriptures pertaining when Joseph was in Egypt. And I'm talking about the son of Israel when he was thrown in a ditch and then he was brought down here to Egypt. So this pyramid picks up the things that are pertaining to Joseph. This pyramid is pertaining to Moses and the things that happened to Moses because they were down here in Egypt. But now picking up the principles of how that this one when he died this is picking up um, when he was put in Joseph's new tomb. Here, this is showing for when he resurrected because here's a lightning bolt and the angel was pointing to him here. And then this is him ascending up into heaven, sitting on the throne and pouring out his spirit in the hearts and minds of man. So now when we get to the Pentecost plate and we see this heart manifesting right here and this heart manifesting down here, when it was talking about how he had gave him the cup. He says, drink, but this is my blood of the New Testament and here is the cup. Drink, see, this is the cup that he was talking about. When he was talking about, this is the bread, take, eat, or this is my body broken for you. This right here that you see as a scroll that is manifesting over, see, over here, over the kingdom, See, this is manifesting the bread. She said that he is the bread of life. See? Here, right here, you see them receiving Pentecost or the spirit of Yahweh. See, it's the same manifestation of that manifesting right here. Them receiving the Holy Spirit manifesting right here by the light above their heads. See? Coming down as Joshua is speaking. See? And unto them, and they are remembering the things that Joshua has said unto them in spirit. This is showing forth the Holy Spirit in fire above their head. This right here is showing forth how they have received it, see, by them of being illuminated. Right here when we get to plate 33, the persecution, manifesting right here, persecution, see, condemned state, false messiahs, Judas, manifest himself, 
after he betrayed Yahshua Messiah, he ran out into the night and he hung himself. See, and he betrayed Yahshua for 30 pieces of silver. We have the 30 pieces of silver that's right here in his money bag that has fallen. See, we understand that this was his guts that had spilled out after he hung himself. We didn't want guts to be hanging out, so we put the 30 pieces of silver to be falling out when he hung himself for betraying Yahshua, the innocent blood of Yahshua Messiah. So, therefore, right here, he was the persecutor. See, they're persecuting, you understand what I'm saying, his brethren, just like how we see the principles of how uh, Cain slew Abel. Now we see how Judas slew Yahshua, picking up the same principles of what happened in the beginning. So now we come over here to plate 34, Gentile conversion. This is the reality of the Gentile conversion, but picking up Pentecost as well as with the Jews and the Gentiles because the same thing had happened with them both. But this is showing forth how we have one, the Jews and the Gentiles being together, forming that one new man in the body of Yahshua, the Messiah. Now we get here to the resurrection and confirmation. We have Peter right here on plate 35 in the holy place giving the confirmation of the things that happened when he went to Cornelius' house or he went unto the Gentile nation. So therefore, seeing Peter speaking right here, this is him as far as the principal speaking, giving a confirmation of the things that have happened at Cornelius' house. This is Cornelius' house and the things that happened and the three witnesses of the brother that went with them. So therefore, by him confirming and speaking, this is him picking up those same principles. This is Peter confirming to his brethren how that the Gentiles have received the spirit of Yahshua and the Messiah, just like how they did before. See, when they was first initiated to them. Here you see how Peter is in prison and he's coming up straight away by the angel. This is manifesting by the ascension because this is Peter ascending up, just like how Yahshua ascended up. This is manifested 10 years after the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah, picking up the same principles as an ascension. And this is him coming up out of jail. So this is why we see the same of the ascension. Like I said, line upon line, precept upon precept. Precept can be a synonym, just picking up the principle of something that happened in a prophecy and something that you can see related to the vision and the prophecy and it being harmoniously. That's how we can determine if it is of Yahweh or if it is of man. Here on plate 36, we got the principles of blood, water, spirit, see, and then the three that bear record in heaven. Here within the body of Yahshua the Messiah, we have the principles of blood, water. Here, see, within the fourth day of creation, it says spring. Spring is actually picking up the season. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, we put the blood and the water principles down here. Because for the simple fact that when they stuck Yahshua in the side, out came this red is representing the blood, the blue is representing the water. So when he was stuck in the side by the centurion guard, this is the blood and this is the water that cleansed heaven and earth. This is representation. The blue portion is representation of heaven. This is the representation of earth or which is the court round about that picked up the principles of the blood. And this is the only acceptable sacrifice that Yahweh has accepted. You understand what I'm saying? It took away the sins of the world, opposed to everything that had manifested within the apothecary when the children of Israel had to take physical sacrifices to this particular threefold tabernacle, and tangible tabernacle pattern to be burned for the remissions of their sins at that time. The apostasy that we see right here in plate 37 is the same that we use with Cain. When he was over in the land of Nod, and this is the apostasy that is manifested right here. And this is the stony heart, stony heart plate. See those who are anti-messiahs, false prophets, denominations, deceivers, false teachers, infidels, skeptics, atheists with false sciences and their theoretical opinions. And we hear that all day long with individuals, you see what I'm saying, that's supposed to be of up under the same belief as us, see, within the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research that are preaching that damnable doctrine, see, and that are going away from what we have learned from our founder or from Yahweh in a body, Henry Clifford Kendall. So now getting to the eschatology, eschatology chart, play, when we see how we have the truth, the way, and the life. That is being illustrated right here, where you can see the truth, the way, and the life manifesting right here 
See, through Yahshua, the Messiah. And he is the only truth, the only way, and the life. See, and then it's showing you how the Elohim is being revealed right here. It's manifesting right here. That is the only way that, that can be revealed. Elohim be revealed. And every man in his own order, how it says over there in 1 Corinthians 15 and 22. See, and this is to illuminate one's mind. To be able to see Elohim in your heart and in your mind and being revealed from heaven. And this is heaven. Okay. So now we get right here to the new earth and the renovation of the earth. It's kind of self-explanatory. Here's your new earth. The fire all the way around is showing forth the renovation. See, and how we have the new earth and all these things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. I'm going to have to learn this camera, but, you know, I'm going to learn it sooner or later. So please bear with me. And then here is your plate 40 with plate 4, within plate 40 with Yahshua. See, uh, the sanctorium of sanctoriums manifesting itself right here. See, manifesting, holding just books that's manifesting the stars of heaven right here within his chest cavity. Okay? So that is your examination. Okay? And that completes our examination. We do this over and over and over again because what we want to do is, is that we want you to be able to get a uh, understanding of the principles that are in the charts. It's very important that we do that. And that is the reason why we do that because we really want you to understand the principles that are manifesting on the platter, the pattern and plan of salvation, the migratory check chart, the uh, ages and dispensations chart, um, the crucifixion chart, the man made in the image of Elohim, and the proof of the existence of the destruction of Satan and his demons through the dispensation of ages chart. All these particular charts are on this one chart here and on this one chart here behind me. Okay, the reason being for this one chart right here, it came in 42 years. Okay, 1960 was the end of the age, this came in in 2002. This one came in exactly uh, 10 to 18 years after this one, this one right here, and it's nothing more but a repeat and replica, but it's just broken down a little bit more so that the explanation of the things which the uh, spirit of animation is doing is a little bit more clear and vivid. So what we're gonna be doing now is, we did the examination. So it looks like what we have next is that we're gonna have our speaker speak, okay? He just completed the exam. So now, what I want to do is, is that um, I spoke on some things. I want to get into them. And what I need to do is, is that I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, the things that we're gonna get into. And they're no more than the things that we talked about um, last time that we were together. Okay. And what that was, we was talking about the second day of creation. And we was talking about this all C9 right up here. Okay. And then the all seeing eye that was looking at the darkness and we was looking at the dove manifesting at the same time. Now, what I said to you was, was that right here, see when we're looking at um, the eye of Yahweh beholding the evil and the good. And that was in um, Proverbs 15 and three. So that's what the meaning of this is when you're looking at this right here. Let's get it. So you will see what we're talking about. Show you that this is not made up. Like this right here. 
Okay. Right here. Okay. And you see how we got the dove and we got the darkness manifesting right here. Can you see that? You can see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. All right. That's what we're talking about. So now we bring this up to right here. All right. Now, I shared with you uh, how that we have the dove penetrating the earth. Okay. And the dove is manifesting itself right here and it's penetrating the earth. Let me back this up so that you can see what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Um, but I'll make sure I show you what I'm talking about. I'm showing you how this dove right here is penetrating the earth thing and producing this tree. Okay. This is the head of the tree. This is the trunk of the tree, as you can see. And then there was a tree right here, which was this tree that was removed from the lion's head. Okay. Which was also here to show forth how you had the tree of knowledge of good and of evil and the tree of life. And both of them were in the midst of the garden, like it says over there within the scriptures. Okay. So that's what we have manifesting right here. All right. Now, what we have to understand okay, about both mysteries manifesting themselves, see, right here in the inner organic earth, that we have to pay attention to the rules and regulations which Yahweh has given unto us, okay? Because I know a lot of viewers are saying, well, now, if Satan had penetrated the earth plane, then that makes the whole earth, you understand what I'm saying, uh, satanic, and then that was a defiled, that defiled virgin mother earth. But what you have to understand that Yahweh is the source and the substance, okay? And when you remember that Yahweh is the source and the substance, all right, that I showed you how that Yahweh Elohim had transmuted himself into the elements of the creation. And I showed you that here, that he's breaking himself down as the first element in the periodic table, table which we understand to be H1. So this is why we have water. And this is why we have water manifesting all the way around here. And as I told you before, that right here, when you're looking at the loins of Elohim, it says within the scriptures that out of the belly flows living waters of life. Okay? So you can see that manifesting right here. This is the belly of Elohim. All right? So now, if we understand that Elohim is the source and the substance, all right, that the mystery must take place within him because he is the limits and the boundaries, okay? So the earth plane is nothing more, you understand what I'm saying, but a vehicle that is manifesting both principles from an angelic state to a physical state. And so whatever had manifested in the angelic must take residence in the physical, okay? So this is why I'm saying it to you like that so that you can understand. So now what I would like to do is, is that I would like to go over here to um, Matthew, the 13th chapter. And I'm going to go over here and get this out of the Holy Name Version Bible. And I'm going to be getting Matthew 13. Is on the chart 24. And this is Joshua, and he is speaking. And it says, Another parable, another parable put he forth unto them, because he's speaking unto his disciples at this particular time. And it says, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now, right here, if you look at the chart, it will show forth how it has a raven and it has ham and it has wheat and it has a dove and it has shim. 
So when it has over here a tear, a raven, and ham, it's going according to the pattern that we have on our finger. Everybody has that, okay? So the tear is manifesting within the most holy place like it has the wheat because that was the first place that Yahweh set the man that was in the garden. Is that correct? So that's the reason why we have tear and we have wheat. And then we have a raven and the dove because after the garden was created and we go along on two our fifth day of creation, then we have life, okay? And then on the sixth day of creation, we have man. And so that's why we have Ham and Shem manifesting there at the bottom. So on this side, see, we have uh, the raven and uh, the tear and Ham. And then on the other side, we have the wheat. We have the dove and Shem that's showing both mysteries, okay? And that's manifesting in the second dispensation, okay? And it's getting ready to come over here into the third dispensation. So when we're looking at that and we're looking at both mysteries that are manifesting right here, you understand what I'm saying? It is showing forth how we can understand the darkness and then the dove that is manifesting that the eye is looking at. And here on the sides, see, it is manifesting steam. So within the steam that you are seeing from the water hitting the fire and the earth is still in this particular inner organic form, you understand what I'm saying? And, and you see in the steam, it is showing for us the first heaven before it is in its elegance and beauty before Yahweh Elohim had rolled away the waters and allowed the vegetation and everything to appear. So that's what we're looking at. So now it is showing forth how it says within the scripture that an enemy has come and has sowed bad seed. And so it says, um, it says, but while men had slept, an enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did thou knowest thou sow good seed in thy field? He said, From whence then hath it tear? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Would thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat therein. You also, excuse me. He says, No, let them grow together. He said, Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them and gather the wheat into my barns. So here, as we look at this tree, it's like it unto the tear that has been gathered and thrown and burned. And then with the wheat that's manifesting within the holy place, it's all gathered into his barn. And it's picking up both of those principles to show forth how we got both mysteries that are manifesting themselves within the earth plane. Because I got to prove this to you. See? Because, see, we got to show forth how the tree of knowledge of good and of evil and the tree of life have both manifested itself, see, principally on the third day before he put the man and the woman there to manifest the whole purpose of Yahweh. So now it's showing forth how that from the beginning, from day one, that the mysteries manifested light and darkness. Then it still manifested that right here, but wasn't revealed until the division of the waters was, and then you see it manifest and get ready to take place within the earth plane. So now here on the third day of creation, when we're looking at it manifesting and we see how it says the division between blossom and fruition. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get into that, okay? But what I want to do is that I would like to go and pick up Romans, the eighth chapter, because this is also the scripture that is manifesting within this particular plate, and we're going to read it to see what it says in Romans, the eighth chapter, which is also my God's mother's favorite chapter. She loves Romans, the eighth chapter. 
So, here we are in Romans, and it's 8, and the scripture is in Romans 20 through 23, which reads thusly, for the creation was made subjected to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. Did you hear that? So if this creation was subjected unto vanity, just like we, we have, it's showing you why. It says, because the creation itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of Yahweh. So the whole creation, when it says that it travails, and it says, for we know that the whole creation grown up and travailed in pain together until now. See, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Hmm. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? So now we see how the whole creation is subjected unto vanity, not willingly. Just like us, we was all subjected unto this. Okay? Uh -huh. So yeah. now, let's go over here and see what it's talking about, about fruition and blossom. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go into the uh, dictionary, and it's the American Webster's Family Dictionary. What time do you have, Doc? Oh, shoot. 8.50. 8 8.50. Well, it doesn't yeah. look like I'm going to be having time to go into that. But I was trying to get into the uh, American um, Family Dictionary, which have a- Yeah, I was wondering if you heard that bell. <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, comprehensive and more than uh, 1,600 entries and 135 definitions. It covers Bible terms, American history, and civil proverbs, and much more. It's the best up-to-date reference uh, 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 Bible. But what I was trying to do was, and I see that I don't have much time, I was trying to define for you the difference between uh, fruition and blossom. And um, I would like for you to look those words up because what we're going to do is at our next meeting on um, Wednesday night, we're going to be getting into those definitions so that you can be able to see how the mystery of Yahweh, the mystery of righteousness and the mystery of iniquity is getting ready to manifest itself on the third day, okay? So, that being said, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to um, get ready to close out this meeting. Um, and I will be ending the meeting. Book of Romans. And it will be the uh, 16th chapter of Romans, the 25th verse through the 27th, which reads thusly. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Yahshua the Messiah, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifested by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting Elohim, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To Elohim, only wise, be glory through Yahshua Messiah forever. Hallelujah. And hey, thank you for your time. I know that the uh, scripture examination kind of ran a little bit extensive, but we have yeah. to do that so that you can be able to see how the scriptures apply. And so that now that everything that you see on the chart that's being revealed behind me 
is in um, straight correlation with the vision of Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley that I'm yeah. a student. Uh, and I'll be studying as long as I have breath in my body um, in righteousness, because I know it's that is the unadulterated truth. So yeah. with that, I thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me. Come back and see me so that we can get into some more things. And what we're going to do is we're going to be getting into the third day. We're going to be taking it from the beginning of creation and running it all the way through. That's what we're going to be doing. So with those, mm -hmm. words, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming out and um, visiting with me. So, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. All right. Uh, that was a good one. Thank you.